everybody. This is the Nerdish Queen. Um, known as Queen Bliss, but you can call me Bliss. Um, I would, first of all, like to say for the couple of people that are looking for this, <laughs> um, I do apologize. And if you were following me from um, Facebook and you kept coming back and you were actually wondering why I'm not on Facebook anymore, um, they want me to show some ID, so, because I changed my, uh, name, and it's not that serious, and I can't change my name back, so it's not that serious for me, so, but, um, just to let you know, I have been going through some, um, things, um, I have been doing the research of this and actually putting it on PowerPoint, this is actually going to be three segments, part two is three segments, um, so this is segment one, it's dealing with stress, and there's two other segments um i have been uh going through uh some uh things uh i've been having um uh migraine headaches and uh my doctor doesn't uh think that it's uh good that i've been having the migraine headaches um especially where i've been having them when you have migraine headaches just to let you know just to, so you can uh know for yourself um I've been having, migraine headaches usually happen on uh, one side, um, or a certain place, but certain spots you have the migraine headaches, they're not good. I've been having headaches up in here, and you would think maybe they were sinus, but they're actually up in here, which, um, because I've been having um, migraines for a while, and I used to take uh, Botox shots, but I didn't like the way that they were making me feel, so I don't want to take them anymore. Um, and they work wonders for headaches. They're 21 shots. 21 shots. So, uh, they're not that bad, but, you know. Um, just to make a long story short, um, I have to have a lumbar puncture. And I'm, uh, because I just had an MRI, and I guess, uh, he still wants to go ahead with the, um, lumbar puncture, so I'm a little bit nervous. But, um, you know gotta have it done so um i am talking about and all also all these things the chemicals um biochemicals in the brain they can lead to mental illness as well so it's a good thing that you know i am going to do it so you know i can find out what's going on because that could be the cause of me having a mental illness and going off balance sometimes and getting depressed and you know because i I'm about 90% of the time I'm a pretty happy person um, I have uh, good days, most of my days are good days most of my days, you know uh, I mean some days, you know I am completely drained of energy you know, and it's like you know, not that I'm unhappy, it's just I really can't do anything, it's hard for me to find the energy energy to get up and do anything so but um that's where uh this uh powerpoint comes in it's um i'm breaking down mental disorders so uh to um diminish stigmas in uh the black community uh because it's something that's um important to our community so um let's uh go ahead and uh, get started um with the stress and how it affects us um everyone goes through stress um there's not a person that we know that doesn't get stressed out according to saracen and saracen stress refers to negative emotional experiences um with associated behavioral biochemical and physiological changes that are related to perceived acute or chronic challenges stressors are the events that stimulate these these changes not everyone is going to respond to stress in the same way this is where maladaptive responses to stress come into play um this is sort of like um say if uh you and a friend uh were to uh be getting uh evicted were to get evicted from your apartment uh 
you lost your job and you were get to get evicted from an apartment you're gonna handle that in, in different ways you're gonna find resources to pay your rent in different ways uh, one uh, uh, one person might actually uh, go and stay with fa friend and family um, and another might actually go and stay in the shelter or they may uh, uh, go find an agency that will help them out so that's uh, where some of those differences lie and uh, there are coping skills Coping skills, personally, I think are learned survival skills. But Saracen and Saracen say that coping skills influence how we identify and try to solve problems. Um, okay, yeah, that's, that's, that's true. Um, and they also say people who cope successfully uh, not only know how to do things, they also know how to approach situations for which they do not have a readily available response. As a consequence, they are less vulnerable. However, they are wrong. I say they are wrong. Um, some coping skills that people are uh, actually using are defense mechanisms. And it doesn't make them less vulnerable. It makes them more vulnerable. Um, to uh, getting uh, mental disorders. Um, if you want to, you can check out a book and it's called Cool Pose by Richard Majors and Janet Billinson. And what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to throw some scenarios at you on why coping skills for white people is different than coping skills for black people. And also on a socioeconomic level and uh, background. Um, so say uh, you live uh, in a, a busy neighborhood, um, it's a lot of drugs, some violence, you know, drugs sometimes, um, and uh, you're a young lady, and or a woman, period, and you walk into the store, you go into the store, drive into the store. And you get out your car, and there's a bunch of men. You already know what's going to happen. You actually have to have these learned survival skills to get through the door and out of the door and into your car safely. For one, you know that you, you're you not going to stand outside and talk to anybody on any corner at any store. This is something you have to know. You can't do it. And you have to let them know. If they, they're talking to you, you can't just blow them off. I'm telling you, you can't blow anybody off. You can't, I ain't talking to you. That's the wrong attitude to have. I'm telling you, you don't know who you're dealing with up here. So you want to say, I'm telling you, you want to say, well, listen, um, I got a boyfriend. I can't really talk. You know, my boyfriend's kind of jealous, you know, you know, that's what you got to say. My boyfriend kind of jealous and, you know, he be having people watching me. So I can't really, you know, be talking out here. You know, you gotta, I can't really talk out here. Cause I don't know who, who my boyfriend have me talking to, uh, who, 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 who my boyfriend has watching me. So, you know, I can't really. You got to do one of those numbers. Or, number two, you tell him, listen, okay, you know, I'm, I'm really busy right now. Um, I would love to talk to you, but I don't really talk to anybody out, um, uh, on, 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 on outside in, in front of stores like this. And maybe he'll follow you in the store. And if he does, fine, you know, cool, you know. Um, I'm sorry. And if he does, fine, cool, let him follow you in the store. You know, that ain't gonna hurt nothing. But I'm telling you, do not give anybody no attitudes. Do, don't even, don't go there. But what you want to do is be civil with people. You know, laugh and joke with them. And nine times out of ten, if something happens, they're going to look out for you. You know, 
but you can't be having straight up attitudes with everybody but that's a coping skill that's a coping skill that you have to learn you know but you know you may not even be in the mood to even want to deal with anybody but you don't know who you messing with in the head so you got to kind of flip the script um another scenario is you know you got some young dudes you know that get that they go through the same things too you know they get harassed you know um by police officers searched you know gangs they walk at home through gangs you know but also females too young girls you know 9 10 11 12 13 14 and some of these little little girls are developed you know and they develop they looking like they teenagers and they not so now you got older dudes i ain't talking about you know 16 17 18 years old dudes i'm talking about grown ass men you got these men looking at these little girls trying to pick them up and some of these little girls you know already you know worried about getting jumped on the way home from school but then you got some of these little girls that they don't get no love at home so now they got this grown ass man pushing up on them telling them how pretty they is you know filling their ear with something and there you go so I mean these are coping skills that white people don't have to deal with and that black people in certain communities have to deal with and not just black people but in in uh certain communities you know have to deal with you know so you got these things so certain coping skills you know certain definitions ain't working for us that's working for them so you know um i'm just saying you know this is why i'm here this is why i'm doing this you know, I'm not doing this for me because I've learned, you know, and I'm just really trying to, you know, help other people, you know, uh, as much as I can. But there are also uh, stressful situations, stress arousing situations like personal crisis, rape, bereavement, and grief, and life transitions. You know, when you move from one stage of life to another stage, like with birth and development of the mother-child relationship, initial steps towards independence and tr tr transition to and out of the home environment, daycare, kindergarten, you know, especially with the teenagers from middle school to high school. This is the area from middle school to high school that you really, 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 really want to watch your uh, child because this is when... Uh, depressions and, and mental illnesses start to form you can see uh, mental illnesses uh, forming um, from pre-k on but this is the age because the identity is starting to come into play but keep an eye on your child your loved one uh, during uh, that uh, stage in their life uh, because it's uh, really really important with teenagers their identity is uh high school you remember you know but stress and illness it affects our body in uh, different ways you know um and it's never in a good way stress affects our heart digestive and our nervous system to name a few the way we cope with stress depends on how our actions our reaction to past life experiences are um, not dealing with them is not healthy at all because if we don't deal with them, then our body is dealing with them. Um, so, uh, when you are going through a stressful time, you know, uh, you have to find a way to uh, deal with that stress as far as, you know, working out, you know, um, and the worst thing that we can do is uh, go smoke a cigarette and that's something that I need to learn. You know as well because i i smoke myself and i'm trying to quit um but according to sarah sinna sarison chronic stressors such as imprisonment job strain proximity to danger and unemployment all have a negative effect on the immune system in general 
Experiencing ne negative emotions such as anxiety, depression, and anger contributes to immuno immunological dysregulation. While perceiving that one has good social support seems to strengthen the smooth functioning of the immune system. Now, the proximity to danger is what I just got to be talking about as far as, you know, uh, the, co the communities that we live in. But also, think about uh, Flint, Michigan. Think about um, what's, what's also happening um, on Na Native American reservations when, with their water as well. You know, and stuff that's uh, going on in, in their uh, community as well that's, you know, not really reported on. You really have to, you know, um, friend on social media and listen to some of uh, what they are, are going through um, because I'm completely ignorant to it if I don't, you know, uh, listen to some of what they go through on uh, line. But um, eating disorders in uh, the black community is, it, eating disorders isn't just uh, isolated in the white communities. It, it happens in our community too. You know, um, the pressure to be perfect, you know, uh, the pressure to, you know, uh, be beautiful and young and fed and all the fat shaming that's going on with uh teens and younger women you know make sure you're keeping an eye on your young your, on the, on your loved one you know um everybody don't need to have a big butt everybody don't need to have a skinny waist you know um we all can't look like barbie dolls we cannot do it you know so you know, uh, look out for symptoms of anorexia nervosa, bulimia nervosa, and binge eating. And you can find more uh, about that on uh, the internet. You just do a search. And uh, sleep disorders are uh, an another one uh, to be out on the look f to be on the lookout for. You know, uh, that can lead to uh, mental illnesses. You know, and also mimic mental illnesses. Uh, Saracen and Saracen state that nerve signaling chemicals called neurotransmitters control whether we are asleep or awake by acting on different groups of nerve cells or neurons in the brain. Neurons in the brain stem, which connect the brain with the spinal cord, produce neurotransmitters such as serotonin and norepinephrine that keeps some parts of the brain active while we are awake. Other neurons at the base of the brain begin signaling when we feel when we fall asleep. Excuse me. So in other words, neurotransmitters, which are the nerve signal signaling chemicals, sends messages to our brains about whether we are asleep or awake. And the neurons signal how our body should respond to the signal. So if you don't sleep and you're sleeping too much, you know, that can lead to symptoms of a, a, a mental disorder. Um, and these are some of the, some of the um, disorders uh, from a, um, sleep uh, illnesses. Um, there are dysomnias, which involve abnormalities in the amounts and quality or timing of sleep. There is insomnias, narcolepsy, sleep apneas, and parasomnias, which is unusual behavior or psychological events occurring during sleep, which is nightmares. Nightmare disorder, sleep terror disorder, sleepwalking disorder, and just so you know, just so you know, and this is why you really, really want to, you know, keep an eye out on your stress. Um, psychophysiological disorders very important to keep, you know, an eye on. 
Um, Searson and Searson say that physical conditions in which psychologically meaningful events are closely related to bodily symptoms. Psycho psychophysiological disorders might be thought of as end products of biopsychosocial process. Cancer, cardiovascular disorders, coronary heart disease, hypertension, stress. Stress is not normal. We all get stressed but prolonged stress can lead to all of these things. So, you know, I do want to talk to you about a time where, you know, I thought everything was going good for me, you know, and it was, everything was going good. I was busy, busy, busy. I had two jobs, an internship that I got hired at, you know, so I had three jobs and uh, I was making the dean's list. I was the student trustee at my school. I was heavily involved in student activities um, as well as student government. Um, and I was involved in the community. And everything somebody asked me to do, I said yes. I did not say no. And if I did say no, it's because I really couldn't do it. And I got stressed out. And then came the anxiety attack. And I will talk about anxiety um, in the next segment. So, what I want to say for now is peace, love, and live blissful. And uh, see you in the next